Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 59 of A Letter to the King. If you're new to the series, A Letter to the King is me trying to keep us up to date with what's going on in the land of PvP, the toings and the throwings um, on what will become the global server. Uh, historically was the Euro PvP one. However, we are still in the Great White hiatus. And there is a little bit of an update on that in that the devs have published a new target date with classic uh, trademark slippage assigned to it with it being software of May the 15th. And while we're in that hiatus, uh, what I'm trying to do with the Letter to the King is as best I can give us a bit of an update on what is slowly rendering or festering on the test bed. Um, now... I, I'd, I'd, I've had a, a lot of feedback, actually. This week's Letter to the King has is, is, uh, been viewed more times than mm, probably for two months. So there's lots of interest at the moment in naval action. Um, and I did make a few duffers in last week's naval action. Uh, part of this is because I'm a bit of a duffer. And part of it is because, of course... Not everything is revealed in the patch notes, or you don't understand everything, or there's two ways to skin a cat. And let's be honest, there's no more fun to be had than skinning cats. Um, so, first of all, trinks, you don't need a permit to build them. I think I mentioned maybe you do. You don't. I don't know if you ever did. I don't know if I dreamt it, or if it's something they changed, but you definitely don't need a permit to build one. At the moment... Uh, I did say last week you can't trade with others in the trade channel. At the moment, the constraint is you can't trade with others from a different nation. Although there is some gibberings that I read um, in one of the forums where they said eventually they want to take trade away completely uh, and you would have to do everything through the marketplace. However, that's not implemented on testbed. So just to be clear, on testbed, you can trade Brit to Brit or Frenchie to Frenchie or cloggy to cloggy, but you can't trade across nations. It's the anti-globalization patch. Um, I did point out last week that you can't craft furnishings um, from, if I come here, to the... Um, where are we? Craft and ships. Uh, and I go to the constipation and I bring up furnishings here. You'll see that it asks me for PVP marks. However, if I go to shipbuilding, I think it is, and go to furnishings, you'll see I can actually make it from the regular constituent parts if you have the bits and the bobs. Um, so there's a bit of a correction there. Uh, let me just pop this back up. Um, so you can craft furnishings via the manufacture tab. Or you can use PVE marks should you have earned them um, from the shipbuild tab. Right, so that's uh, corrections on Jaheel Duffer's last week. Let's go through what's happened this week. So quite, quite a lot has happened. Uh, they've done a fair amount of tweaking on fixing the open world speed of uh, ships laden with cargoes so if you carry if you're in an lgv and you've got a full cargo it'll take at the moment it's about a knot and a half off the top i have to be honest it's very hard to be precise because some of the perks and some of the modules you get um you know copper plating type things etc um, or if you've made a ship using a a, a trim that favors speed not all of it is working um, I, I tried to make a machine gun ship earlier in the week uh, where I tried to stack three different mods that would increase my rate of fire, essentially. If I'd got it right, it was going to take about 17% off a 58-second load time. Um, but it clearly wasn't working. Not all of them are working right now. So it's difficult to know how big an impact um, fully laden ship speeds will be. Uh, the other thing that wasn't working the last time I checked was the, and I've got this as a perk, is the optimised hull perk, which lets you carry more than advertised. Now, they may have fixed that. It's difficult to tell from day to day. Um, so it's difficult to know exactly how much a laden ship will be hampered by its cargo. Um, there's, a fair, there's a few grumpy monkeys out there that say ships would always carry ballast anyway up to pretty much their cargo capacity because they were built to run at a certain speed. 
I have to be honest, I don't know exactly how all these things worked. Other than if you're a trader and you've got a big fat belly full of compass wood or oak log or something, you will run much slower than you will um, with a empty hold. And, and much slower is about 10% uh, off an average speed. Um, it does seem to affect traders slightly less than it affects warships. But again, at the moment, it's a little bit hard for me to be precise. The scientific testing, things do change on a daily basis on the test bed. So you may test a ship on a Monday, and when you test it on a Thursday, they've fixed something and it behaves differently. So um, testing is a, is a uh, scientific testing, if you like, is a uh, difficult chore. Um, they fixed up port battles. Um, you only receive conquest marks. Conquest marks are the reward you get for, for, for being in a port battle. Um, now, if you defend an empty port, you'll get no reward, which is a bit... Meh. Um, a reduced reward, yes, but you'll only get conquest marks if baddies rock up. And at the moment, you'll get three conquest marks for a line ship, two for a... Uh, essentially a mid-sized battle or a frigate battle if you like and one for a shallow port battle um, and conquest marks are very important if you want to get yourself things like first rate bps uh, they raised the repair cooldown so it went up to i think it went up to 15 minutes it's back down now i think to 12 although i haven't sailed uh, i haven't used it for 36 hours so it could have changed again so they're tweaking the repair cooldown um, there were people who'd sort of done six cooldowns in a single engagement and they felt that was probably a bit too many. So they're tweaking it a little bit. Now, of course, damage has been increased in general, so battles last less than they used to. Uh, in saying that, most of us are running around in unmodded um, store-bought ships, so that probably exaggerates the damage model once you've built yourself a proper boat and properly tooled it up um, we might see the mitigation begin to rise again but there's plenty of new mods out there um, whenever you attack a warship it's worth trying to loot it so um, you can either you can do that really in two different ways you can capture the ship or board the ship I should say and then you loot it the normal way you press X to assign Q uh, assign crew and, and, and then you get access to the enemy's hold and you can move things from the enemy's hold into your own. And quite often on warships, there will be mods in there and the mods, some of them are a pure mod, which you can add into your, essentially your permanent slots. But some of them are skill books, which you can read and then they become available um, skill slots that you can put in the five slots your ship has, should you have a three, five ship. Um, and that allows you to do all sorts of things. And I have to say, there's some very interesting ones out there. I picked up one the other day that improved my penetration by 5%. So that was quite interesting. I've not seen something like that before. And there's lots of sort of the old ship hands guide and things like that. And they may give you a slight... Uh, reload time improvement and a dispersal. So there are sort of pillows magazine access combination but both reduced a little bit of course um so you can um you can you can board a ship and steal its ship uh, and then on the board ship screen you can then tell it you can basically then instruct that the ship be scuttled or sunk and in doing so you get the rewards for sinking a ship or whoever did the requisite damage or assist damage gets the rewards for sinking the ship or you kill a ship in the normal way, you strip off one side of its armour and then kill its structure. Um, and if you're quick enough, which I rarely am, you can prep up on boarding, sail next to it, slow down and do the normal boarding action. But um, that's a bit pesky because ships sink at a fairly random Jesus type of um, pace. So sometimes a ship can take forever uh, after the kill has been reported on the screen before... Um, essentially its decks go under the water um, or it can disappear in the blink of an eye if you can get there fundamentally before the top rail is under the water you'll be able to loot the ship as long as you're prepped for boarding and traveling at the requisite speed 
um, and you can steal its loots as well. Uh, that can be a bit tricky if you get there just as it sinks because it makes you think you've stolen it, but you've got the loots, but then you haven't. But such is life on the open seas. Um, the crew requirements, if you had a fleet, were quite high, and they've, they, they've brought that down a little bit for trader ships, so you need less crew now to have multiple ships in your fleet so if you're running with a large fleet of three lgvs or indiamans you can choose to under crew those um, fleet ships more severely than you could historically um, carrying the risk of course that if you're intercepted um, your crew are pretty much either going to be able to sail or shoot but barely do both um, so that's one set of changes but there's been a lot more so last week if um, I was out on the ocean and I'd lost 10 crew I could use one barrel of rum to revive my hardy souls and either get them drunk enough to forget their missing limbs or rub um, rum all over their bodies to heal the lacerating effects of splinters or whatever. Um, they've modified that quite severely. Um, that is now one barrel of rum to heal one crewman, so it's ten times less efficient. Um, and I think they've made crafting slightly easier, although I have to say I have already developed a pathological hatred of barrels. Um, also, crew last week only cost us, well, cost us nothing. It was zero gold. Now, they've raised that to 68 gold per crewman well that's at the end of the day that's a relatively nominal figure so uh, if a rear admiral managed to lose all his crew he lost his the ocean um it would only cost you 70k to completely replenish your uh, barracks full of sailors and of course the reason they chose 68 is because 68 is the best number in the world now a lot of people mistakenly think 69 is the best number in the world but they are fools. 68 is, is, is clearly the better number. 68 is you do me, I owe you one. Uh, and that's why they've chosen 68 for the cost of crewmen. The battle exit screen, which um, last week we were talking about the fact that's going to disappear. That's gone now. So as soon as you finish a battle um, and you escape the battle, uh, you're just kicked out into the open world. Uh, I think if you stay in the battle, you get 15 minutes in there before you're auto-kicked into the outside world. If you Alt F4, you will appear in the open world with the classic two-minute log-off timer. And what they've been doing this week is tinkering with invisibility. So what they want to do is, as you exit a battle, either always or sometimes, you will have a period of invisibility. Now, I, I don't know if when they say invisibility, they mean actual invisibility or they mean invulnerability. Um, but fundamentally, I think it's invisibility. That's the word they're using. And if you are, the, at the moment, the current rule du jour is that if you are the lower BR participant in the battle, when you exit the battle, you will get, I think it's 60 seconds. It might be 90. I'm not sure because the tinkering of invisibility to allow you to peg it and ideally get away from what many people refer to as revenge fleets. Um, now, whether or not you will be able to get away or you'll just be chain tagged, we will discover. They've talked about maybe making this two minutes and they've also talked about maybe giving it to both sides, not just the low BR, so that some little turnip in a Rattler doesn't keep chain tagging you until a fleet of suitable big boys arrives to give you a good slapping. Um, one of the complaints that they've answered is that if you were a dirty pirate scumbag and you were trying to steal all my loot, as you were closing in on me to tag me, I would rec recognise that the end is nigh and I would destroy all my loot. Um, now they've decided that's a bit crap. So right now, each stack of loot, you can only destroy it one item at a time. And then there's a 25 second cooldown, I think it's 25 second cooldown, before you can destroy the second stack of loot. So in theory, if it took you 50 seconds to get tagged, at best, um, you could only get rid of three stacks of the stuff what is in your hull. 
Um, the other big change they've made is copper's gone. The, we don't use copper in the game anymore. There's no copper mines as they're looking to rationalize the different types of items in the game. Um, copper be gone. Ship blueprints now need provisions. Um, so again, if I just pop open the game, where are you? And if I come back to uh, any old ship, really. Here we go. We're, we're on one now and all. Let's go to ships and pick the beautiful Trincomalee. Um, what you'll see is that she needs 365 provisions. Now, of course, provisions require food supplies, which are, is, is the lovely fish and salt that we always get when we're sailing around. And, of course, it needs friggin' barrels, which is uh, fur, which becomes tar, coal and iron and oak wood. So, um, in order, so this is like an extra thing that you have to have now. So, for a trinket, it's 365. If I go to the constipation, it's 500 provisions. And again, so that's, you know, um, a fair whack. Now, the good news is it's not too busy in, in, in labor hours. So, it's only going to be like 50 or 60 labor hours. But it is a fair whack of bits and bobs to draw that together. Now, these materials are pretty easy to get hold of. However, the food supplies, you know, um, to get 500 food supplies, I need 50 salt and 500 fish meat. Well, most of us will probably collect that sailing around, but it is a little bit of a throttle. Now, it does create a bit of a market, I suppose, for these things. Um, right now, in the wonderful test server KPR, neither of these things are for sale. People have got contracts for them. So you may laugh a little bit because, of course, you know, historically, um, every time you landed in a port, you'd flog off your fish meat. Um, but not anymore. Um, you keep it now and, 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 and you can either sell it or turn it into food supplies. Um, so it's a sort of bit of a throttle on the build. There's some weirdo things in the market these days as well. Look at this. Royal Navy College graduate. So I don't know if this is some sort of, you know, upper class powder monkey um, or if it's a new maybe I can I don't know I don't know what it is yeah, it's the first time I've seen it today um, so anyway that's that let's go back to the update um, so ship blueprints now need provisions so it's a bit harder to build ships fundamentally and um, I found salt is often the constraint um, just because it's a bit random. You know, you get fish and, and, and quite often you get the bigger fish. They make lots of fish meat. So I've, I've always, I always seem to have enough fish meat kicking around. Uh, but you can go on a bit of an unlucky sail where, you know, you can be out there for an hour and just because God hates you, you, only get, you don't get enough salt. Who'd have thought we'd be complaining about not enough salt? But there you go. Um, what else? Big change to crafting. So this is probably the headline, the headline change um, in this week's uh, naval action. Um, you can now make your frames from one type of wood and your hulls from another type of wood and they both give you different bonuses. And there's half a dozen new woods added to the game. And most of these woods the only way you can get them is through NPC deliveries, as in they appear at random ports. So let's go and have a little look at that. What are you jibbing on, gibbering on about, Jaheel, you drunken fool of a man? If we come back to craft and we look here at our beautiful constipation, you'll see I can choose all these new types of woods. Look at all these bonkers woods, right? So there's fir and oak, um, which I can build uh, buildings for. But teak, live oak, mahogany, Bermuda cedar. Now, I'll, I'll say this wrong because I don't really know these ones. Uh, Kaguarian. And Sabiku. Sabiku, I believe, is the Japanese suicide wood. That's what it sounds like. Uh, I believe it's a native wood to uh, the south side of continental USA. And white oak, um, which is some sort of Ku Klux Klan oak. Uh, that they used to make crosses for burning on people's lawns. Um, now, so I can I can choose that as a wood type, 
and then I can choose Sabiku as my planking. And then you'll see here that um, in the ingredients, I now need white oak frame parts, which of course is made out of white oak logs. And um, I can make, where's it gone? So I've done with white oak and Sabiku. Um, it's probably an Indian word, uh, but anyway. Um, sounds better in Japanese. Uh, I can I can make the planks out of sabiku. So why would I do that? Um, well, before we do that, let's just jump to the shop. So you'll see here that one of the woods that you can no longer farm yourself is mahogany. But you'll notice that there's a reasonable store of mahogany. Now that's because no one on the test server wants mahogany they all want live oak because it's marvelous but as you can see it's really expensive because people are bastards um but you'll see here i put in an order for live oak and it filled inside about 10 hours um all these white oak on the server as well let's have a little look um yeah so there's white oak and of course you can go into the fantastic trading tool bring up the trading tool here and let's say i'm looking for kagwirian log uh, CAG, there's Cabirian Log, and I then say, well, where is it available, Mr. Trading Tool? And it tells me all these places. I'm very lazy, so where's it available near me? Okay, that's enough. Okay, so Trinidad, that's Dirty Spantard Territory. Uh, Les Gonorrhea, that's Dirty French Territory. Guibera, more Spantards. Uh, Nuevitis, I believe that's a headache tablet. Uh, St. Louis, more bloody Frenchies, St. Anne, ah, at last, a lovely British port. So perhaps I can go there and, and, and buy some. Of course, I won't be able to because every man and his dog sailed around there and I'll probably get there and find there's a billion orders for a million dollars. But anyway, I can expand the distance -ometer and try and find me some other, there we go, placentia. Um, so that's beautifully held by um, His Majesty, um, God save you, sir. Uh, so I could put an order in there, um, and where else could I, I don't know, Quibara, that's the Dirty Spanta, Black River, yeah, Black River, so I could get some there, and so on and so forth. So, um, you'd have to go there and either hope there's some lying around in the shop, like there is with Mahogany right now in um, KPR, or if you're less fortunate, you'll have to place a buy order for the you'll see they all appear here uh, where are you Kagarian wood do 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 there we go Ka Kagarian log and I could put a buyer order in there it's going to cost me 163 so if I need about normally you need to say for a constitution you might need a thousand logs something in that order uh, if you were doing both the frames and the planks um, half of that if you were just doing frames or half of that if you were just doing logs. Um, so what are the different types of woods, Jahil, I hear you ask? And what bloody difference do they make? Well, let's have a look. So I've stolen this straight from the forums. If I remember or care, I'll put a link into this particular topic that dis discusses the woods. Um, warning, um, it has changed three times in the last seven days, so uh, they do try to keep it up to date. It normally lags a day or so behind what they've done, which is why people like me stuff up our descriptions of what's on test. So the new trims, they can now affect crew space, obviously your health pool, thickness, and it's a percentage rather than a fixed rate, leak resistance, crew resistance, so this means when you get slapped in the side by a cannonball, you lose less crew from splinter damage. Uh, they slow the spread of fires, um, obviously ship speed, acceleration and turn. So what are the woods that are out there? So um, fair, which is one of the things that we can create forests for. Um, and it's good, for, you know, there's lots of it. Um, it's good for speed, um, uh, but it burns a lot and everyone gets splinters. Uh, Bermuda cedar, it's kind of like a good fir. Um, mahogany um is all right but i have to say when you see the stats page i think teak teak is the new black i think teak is that if you're after you still want to keep the speed but you want a little bit of extra biffiness i think teak could be where you're going oak is the only other one that you can 
farm yourself by creating an oak forest. Now you're almost going to, you're always going to want to farm some wood because that's the only way you get compass wood. I have to say you get a lot more compass wood for your effort than you used to do. It's uh, compass wood's definitely not a constraint now. You you pull out a full um, bag of oak and you'll get enough compass wood to pretty much build any ship you want. Um, so um, oak is sort of the I'd say it's the middleman of the woods so it's kind of your stock because you don't need an exotic wood for it um, you're going to suffer a little bit of speed and you're going to get some splinters um, but out of it you're going to be a lot more biffy both in armor and in health pool um, Sabiku is probably the exotic equivalent of oak so it's a little bit better than oak um, and it's kind of a good all-rounder. You don't suffer too big a speed penalty, but you get the biffiness out of it. White oak is uh, crazy bonkers thickness. So this is the new live oak to some extent, uh, uh, perspective. Um, and white oak gives you a lot more armor um, and I think health pool. But everything else is crap. You turn like a brick and you're slow as a bugger. And then some super heavy woods like live oak and Caguarian. Um, Caguarian sounds like a, a, a Roman author. Um, they are things that you would probably use for the frames for some of your more tanky ships. Um, and they're sort of specialist uh, frames only woods, live oak and Caguarian. So let's, uh, that's my sort of opinion, but the fact sheet is here. Again, this is on the forums. So um, if we look at the frames, you'll see you, you, you can't make planking out of all the woods. So Caguarian and Live Oak are planking, are frames only, I should say. Um, everything else you can use for both. So I know uh, one of the guys on test made himself a lovely Sabiku Essex, where he used Sabiku for both the frame and the planking. So you can see there, he'd have got an extra 13% cumulative effect to his HP. Um, he would have got an extra 4.5%, uh, that's to his structure. Sorry, that's the middle bar. 4.5% to his actual hull. He'd have picked up an extra 6% in armor, which is pretty sexy time. Uh, he'd have been 2% uh, extra leak resistant. So I'm taking one value from this column here and adding it to this column here. Um, his crew would be knee deep in splinters. It's about as splintery as you can get. Um, fire resistance is up quite a lot for Sabiku, but he'd lose quite a bit in speed, three and a half percent in speed and acceleration, and he'd be quite a bit s slower turning as well with, um, oh Christ, I'm on the wrong one here. Quite a bit, uh, okay, so uh, let me just fix that then, Sabiku. Um, sorry, would be speed-wise, he'd actually gain a little bit of speed. So you can see Sabiko's pretty good. It's just it's just the um, splinters where it's bad. Now compare those stats to Live Oak, and you start as the frame. You start seeing your speed gets massacred, as does your maneuverability. However, your Biffo's very very good. Uh, Caguarian is better than Live Oak, um, and you just suffer a bit more with the crew. Um, but White Oak is probably, so I think if you were going for a tanky McTank spanky spank spank experience, you might want Live Oak frames with a White Oak planking and that would be, now you'd suffer a bit in speed. Uh, or you could drop down a little bit and have White Oak, White Oak, and that would give you a fair amount of resistance. Um, but then you've got Sabiku. So there's there's lots of different combinations you could you could look at doing with different types. And, and it depends, of course, you know, fourth rates, you might value speed over pure tankiness. Um, and obviously your armor bonuses here, your, you know, um, Live Oak, White Oak's gonna give you 10% armor bonus. That's enormous. But you're gonna be, you know, Everyone's going to be anyone with that build is going to be sailing a Santissima because it's so slow. You're a brick. Anyway, look, this is really interesting, and 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 this flexibility in these different um, build combinations 
I like these subtleties, this is good. I'm sure they'll tweak this, someone will cry that they couldn't sink a white oak, live oak ship, so they'll decimate it, etc, etc. But I do like the fact that it's not over, it's not purely linear. There's sort of this happy medium, probably around the Sabico line, or Sabico line, um, and then you're now beginning to compromise if you use the really heavy woods for the frame um, or move up to the white oak for the planking. Of course, these are relatively rare and difficult to get. There'll be high competition for these. They'll be selling on the market for lots of spondules. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, good old oak um, at six and a half percent um, a 9% additional structure health, 3.5% um, additional HP, and 4% extra thickness, you might be happy with that, and you're only sacrificing a small amount of um, speed for that. In fact, you, you, you're not sacrificing speed, you're 0.75% faster um, than white oak, which is where the speed penalties begin to come in. So it's you know there's lots of slots to be looked at there. Turn rate is a big thing for some people. So having a ship that negs out your turn rate, um, you know, might be grumpy monkeys. Whereas having a ship, you know, Bermuda Cedar, would give you lots of speed. Um, uh, I mean, lots of speed, Bermuda Cedar. Um, not such a devastating reduction in your damage stats. Uh, and so you might choose to go with Bermuda Cedar there. Um, or even combo something that gives you a bit of a speed boost of, you know, 5% frame-wise with something like Sabigu, which um, gives you, you know, makes up for the, um, essentially the weaker wood, you know, it gets you, you'd be closer to Teak. Teak looks quite nice. It's been ages since I've thought, oh, I need a Teak ship. I have to say, my store-bought Teak ship feels like it's it's that the planking may be teak but the framing could well be butter um because it takes about four hits and it's you know crack open the lifeboats everybody so um what's my opinion well i hear you say i don't care to hear what your opinion is well tough because it's my video so you get in my opinion um i have to say in general after some time i'm beginning to like it I did say this a little bit last week, but I am. I'm beginning to like it. It's harder, higher risk, higher reward. Um, now, if you reckon after a week, once the wipes happen, so if you're thinking that by the 22nd, you're, you're, you're going to be, sorry, Mrs. J's exploding. You're going to be sailing around in a first rate um, with all the bells and whistles. Well, I'll have a pint of whatever you're drinking. The areas I'm not as excited about is um, ship crafting for the Wanjora ship, I feel is a bit hard. So if you're building a Connie, that's 15 PvP marks, which probably means you've won three to five PvP engagements without dying. Um, the provisions are definitely a bit of a throttle. Um, Will people sell these things or give them to traders? Well, they might do. Um, and crafters, etc., etc. They might do. Um, we'll see. Um, so I, 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 I think they just tightened up. Given we're on one Jura ships, and given there's no battle screen, and given they forced us onto the open world to do everything, Everything I had to sail on the open world to make this uh, week's edition of Letter to the King. I was going to do it in semaphore so you could enjoy the hardships with me. Um, I, I just think it's a little bit too hard. I mean, we've still got all the mats we used to have to make a three or a four or a five Jorah ship. Um, plus, once you get to Connie's and above, you've got permits. Plus, you've got provisions. Plus, if you want the sexy time woods, you're going to have to scrap it out in the market. You can't... So in the past, if I wanted Live Oak, yes, I'd have to sail up to our end of the US and, and, and sail all around and then send it from outpost to outpost and then sail it to my construction hub. Um, but that was still within my control. Other than being pirated by dirty scumbag pirates, I could choose to do that work and get the stuff. 
Now, if I go to St. Anne, the costing of the buy orders for Sabiku may simply be beyond me. I might not be able to afford 1,500 a log and buying 1,000 logs, you know, one and a half million or whatever to, um, to build me a new ship. I just might not be able to afford that money. So it's not in my control anymore. Um, I am at the whim and whimsy of the market and whether or not I can set up the requisite buy orders and outbid fellow punters. Uh, now, it also tells me that the smuggler flag, which they've spoken about getting rid of, has suddenly become vital because if I, if I go to the game and I look at um, White Oak, for example, I think I can only buy that from foreign ports. Uh, there might be one British port. Um, but um, some nations will have an overly ample supply of some of those key woods. And um, I find that a little bit fractious. But anyway, um, I still think that the fatwa against capturing AI ships is a little bit too far to go. Um, it doesn't bother me. I, I play with a big clan and um, we'll sail around together and kill stuff and level up and make money. But if I'm a new player entering the game before I'm brave enough to join a clan and be told off for being crap or wonderfully assisted by beautiful clannies, um, and I'm just learning the game myself and trying to work out if I like it, I think it's too slow at the start. Whereas if I could go out in my yacht or my cutter or whatever and snot a trader's snow and steal its cargo and take it back to port... Um, at least I'd be able to fund my adventures, which um, I actually think a few newbie players, especially before we get to a game that's festooned with beautiful UIs, explanations and tutorials, I think a few players may sink two to three hours in this game and fundamentally go bankrupt. Um, and just go, this is crap, it's too hard, a progression's a nightmare, what's wrong with you people? So I think nublets should be able to, and you could rank limit this, if you're in the first three or four ranks, you should be able to capture AI traders. That's just my opinion. Um, now, it's very difficult to tell if the player-based economy works on the test server, fundamentally because there's so few of us. Um, and I'm a little bit worried that RVR hostility is going to be too hard to create. So if I wanted to go and capture Salamanca from the Spanish fellows, if there's no players sailing around Salamanca, I have to kill AI fleets. I can't take a mission there. You can no longer take missions in targeted waters. So I'm just going to have to sail around killing AI fleets. And that's an incredibly slow way of raising hostility. I mean, there's a there's actually a limited number of AI fleets, uh, fleets per area. So the best way for an enemy to slow me down raising hostility at the moment would be don't defend it because that way I can't kill them to get lots of lovely PvP um, aggro points. Um, so I think that needs some work. Now, my biggest fear, and this isn't a game design problem, this is to some extent a PR and marketing problem, Um I like a lot of what they're doing. See, I said it again. I like a lot of what they're doing. However, if it has a player base of 250 people on a server, uh, or if you're in a time zone where that might be 80 or 90, it won't work. The market economy won't be alive enough. There won't be enough PvP to earn your marks. And progression will be glacial. Glacial action, which is probably an oxymoron. Um... So I'm, I'm really worried that, um, a lot of, that this is going to be a shock to a lot of players. Um, how much harder it is. There's very few people on the test server. I was chatting to a bunch of guys over the weekend. Um, I'm not a statistical scientist, but I, and, and these are guys who've basically taken time off. And, of course, people gravitate to the dramatic and as such, they've heard a lot of the negatives and not really consumed as many of the positives. And my scientific um, barometer of mood of the 10 or so hardcore NA players 
um, who they're not that hardcore. They're not on the test server. They're lazy bastards. No, but hardcore NA players, guys who were on there every day for three or four hours a day, was that they? I, I would, I would, I would measure them as grumpy, um, not excited, and and I think some of them won't be can't be asked to put the effort in now. If they can't be asked, they don't deserve the good ships. The problem is if they can't be asked, and most people can't be asked, will we have enough people in our player base? And this is my biggest concern. Even if they've designed a beautifully balanced economy, it won't work running at 200 player power. Now, given we've split the servers because of all the shenanigans overnight flipping, um, I think that's going to exaggerate the split. But anyway, let's hope not. I, I honestly believe if we get the six or seven hundred folks on at peak and two or three hundred people on outside of peak, that the player-based economy will be a good thing and forcing people onto the open world will be a good thing. Um, and there'll be a lot more intense and tragic actions when you lose your ships and glorious moments when you save a ship or pull one out of the fire, as it were, and defeat an enemy when you knew you weren't the superior force. I think it'll be far more exciting for that. Anyway, overall I like it. So that's my gibberings. Um, I'm hoping there's only one more letter to the king before we actually get back on the mainstream servers and start enjoying or enduring the game as it is in its new format. Um, so hopefully next week's will be the last before the great wipe. And we will... All be back together and I'll be able to report on the PVP action or lack thereof um, on what will then be the global server if they continue to persist with this madness of splitting us between global and um, people who want time constraints. Anyhow, that's it for this week. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I got loads of comments on my last one. It was really good. Um, be they positive or negative not just moany twattery but you know actual insightful comments rather than they're a bunch of knobs um, which is normally the first or second post um, once that's been said we probably don't need more people going yeah they're a bunch of knobs anyway that's it for this week's naval action I will see you on the oceans and I will catch you <laughs>